Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad, and welcome to the third episode of the Pathway to Medical Residency in Canada. In the first episode, we talked about the requirements for matching into Canada. The second episode, we covered the match process and uh, the why Canada is a more difficult country to match in. And in this episode, we'll talk about Ropen experience into matching into internal medicine. So welcome, Ropen, again. Thank you for having me. So I want to start by talking about your medical school and your journey to Canada. Please tell, tell us about that. Sure. Uh, so for me, I did my med school um, in Aleppo, Syria, University of Aleppo. And uh, I did uh, medicine. I, I studied medicine. Uh, they usually teach medicine in Arabic. Um, but I was always interested in more like uh, learning English and uh, research stuff and stuff like that. So I studied uh, medicine in English by myself. I taught myself English. Um, then I had at the end of my education, so I had the chance to come to Canada and that was in 2016. And um, when I applied, uh, so as I mentioned earlier uh, in the episodes that you have to become a permanent resident to apply and uh, thanks God when I arrived here, like I was a permanent resident and um, I arrived in 2017 uh, in Canada. Uh, for me, when I finished my med school in 2016 until I arrived to Canada in 2017, uh, I had to stay in uh, Beirut, Lebanon for around a year, eight months until my application was processed. But like at that time, I was like uh, working and I was studying and preparing for uh, the US licensing exams. Uh, which I will talk about in a bit. Uh, so I was studying for the United States Medical Licensing Exam Step 2. I came here in 2017 and between 2017 and 2018, um, I completed the, like, the other exams. Uh, so overall, I wrote the USMLE Step 1, the USMLE Step 2, and I wrote the NAC OSCE exam, the MCCQE1, and I also took the international, the IELTS exam. Uh, of course, I also wrote the CAP exam for um, British Columbia. And also I wrote the CASPER exam, a small online exam. And then in 2018, uh, I applied uh, and uh, I ended up matching in my first choice. So uh, I'm doing right now internal medicine residency. Okay, before we go into the match process, because I have yeah. some questions about that, I want to ask, I want to just clarify for our re, uh, for our listeners that medical school in Syria is six years, which is different than US and Canada, where you do four years of undergrad and four years of medical school. So that's one thing. And I know that yeah. you spent some time in Lebanon and you did some medical experience during that time. Can you please tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So when I, when I was like waiting my application to be processed in Lebanon, um, I worked um, as a physician assistant there and uh, like uh, I was like really, I don't know if I can say if it's the right word to describe it, like I was really hardworking and aggressive in my approach. So like I was seeing patients, uh, helping in their management more than a physician assistant, which was like really interesting. I worked with senior refugees um, in a small clinic. Um, actually, it wasn't small, it was like a primary healthcare center. Uh, where like uh, was the, the center was taking care of like Syrian refugees, low income Lebanese population. And I gained uh, tons and tons of experience and that really helped. And that's my advice to people who are applying to come to Canada and they are waiting outside uh, somewhere here, uh, there in the world. So just like try to do something related to medicine, try to maintain, of course, like I understand this is not the applicable for everyone. Everyone have their own situation, but try to do something similar near medicine or like uh, similar to medicine where like, you can mention that in your CV and you try to minimize the gap here. For me, that was a stressful because like I was afraid of having a gap here, but thanks God, like, um, I worked there as a physician assistant. I used that in my CV and that helps helped a lot to have something to talk about in my interviews. Yes, I wanted to touch base on that specifically because I always believe there are opportunities around you. If you were in Canada, in the US or around the world, there is a way for you to do something, even if it was not related to medicine, but at least you're doing something 
and you're filling that gap. If it was related to medicine, that's way better because I believe the more you're away from your medical training, the more you, you forget your this clinical, ex, uh, clinical information you learn during your medical school. So by being a physician assistant or by doing research, you keep in touch with medicine, which is, which is so important for a clinical job like residency. Yes, actually it does. Even in residency, at one point you start forgetting the things that you learned in your first and second year med school or even like later. And the same applies to medicine. Yes, and you have to always keep in touch. Exactly. <laughs> so after you arrived, uh, I know you've done great on your USMLE step one and step two. And when you arrived to Canada, how did these exams help you in the Canadian exams? And what did you study for these Canadian exams? That's a good question. So to be honest with uh, like um, everyone outside there who are uh, hearing us. Uh, so I, I was preparing for the USMLEs. I never had the idea to like uh, apply uh, or like come to Canada because like um, I, I never like thought about it. And like uh, out of nowhere in 2016, I had the chance to come here and I really loved the country here. And I really feel like I owe the country a lot. I owe the people a lot here. Uh, so I wanted to stay here and become part of this uh, uh, great country. Uh, so what helped me, but it's not applicable to everyone. So please don't generalize my experience. Uh, what helped me is writing the United States licensing exams helped me a lot in the Canadian licensing exam. It gave me a strong base of knowledge and it, it, it boosted, it made things easier. So uh, when I came here, I wrote the United States Medical Licensing Exam Step 2, which helped me in writing one of the Canadian exams that is canceled now. Uh, that's why I didn't mention it earlier and uh, no need to know about it, but it's called the Medical Council of Canada Writing Exam. So it was one of the old exam. So it helped me a lot in writing the exam and uh, scoring very well. And also it gave me a base to prepare for the MCCQE1 and the NAC OSCE exam. Uh, but again, don't generalize my experience. I know many people who did not write the U.S. licensing exams, and so they achieved very well on their Canadian exams, and they are IMGs, uh, and they are doing residency right now. So that's my experience. That's interesting. Uh, what, did, what resources did you study for the MCCQE1 and the NAPOSCE, considering that you already had good bases from your step one, step one, step two? Actually, the, the, the basis that uh, I, I gained in step two, I used the same material uh, for step two for the MCCQE1. Uh, it's different from different, like some people use the Toronto notes, some people go and uh, uh, like uh, for different courses, take different courses. There are some different courses out there. Uh, I'm just, I just, I, I don't want to mention their names. Uh, uh, like when you are here, uh, you can ask and people will guide you. Like it's all online and you can find them. Uh, but for me, I studied from the same resources that I prepared for the SMLE Step 2. For the NAC, ask, first, sorry, go ahead. Uh, two exams around the same time, correct? Yes. Okay. Because uh, they, you did them, I think, very sh short period apart and the information because yes, they, they are really similar. They, they, they are really similar. Medicine is medicine. Like the concept is the same. Exactly. And even for me, when I prepared for my licensing exam in Syria, I was preparing from the step exams. And as we said, medicine, medicine, they're not going to ask you something from different sources. Yeah. What about NAC OSCE? So for the NAC OSCE exam, um, uh, the US one. Yeah, it's one of the exams that uh, it's, it's really interesting because like you can't prepare for this exam by your own. Uh, I was really lucky by having good partners, people to train with, people to train with and exercise with. So um, I had, I, I practiced with four or five people and they really helped me to boost my score. There are materials out there 
again, uh, I don't want to mention any names, uh, like uh, when you're here in Canada, when you ask people, people will tell about the materials. So there are different books and different, everyone use their resources. For me, like I practice with people on taking histories and doing physical exams. And what I recommend for the OSCE is practice, practice, practice as much as you can practice with people uh, same as your level higher level worse level like just practice and gain experience it's more a doing exam than like just learning exam so you have to learn how to do you have to take history how to do a physical exam yes that's a great advice practice 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 for these kind of exams yeah Tell us about your clinical experience. How did you get to get this observership that you did and how they helped you in the match process? Okay, so for me, um, as an IMG, I didn't have the chance to come here and do electives. Uh, so I did my med school in Syria and I came here first time in my life, like after I finished med school. So I was already uh, like uh, a, phys a physician ready like to go to residency, right? So. Uh, the only way I had is like just to go to do an observerships. Uh, when I arrived, um, I'm warning everyone, it's frustrating process, but it's not impossible. If you want to do it, you can find a way. I started sending emails. I, like I arrived here, I knew no one. Uh, like I, 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 I had zero friends and zero acquaintances. Like. And I just like opened the uh, different hospitals' websites. Uh, I looked who are the physicians there. Uh, I like then like uh, copied their email, wrote an email. Hello, my name is uh, Rupen Adabashan. I did my med school here. I wrote the following exams. I'm attaching my CV. I'm really interested in like this specialty. I want to really do, do an observership with you for one week or two weeks. Uh, tell me what is your what time uh, like uh, is okay for you, and I will try my best to accommodate. Like that was the email, and I send it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So people out there who are trying to seek an observership, if you don't get a response, please don't be frustrated. This is normal. Physicians here are really busy. And like uh, they might not uh, check their emails or may, they might check your emails and they want to help you and they forget about that. So like try to send a friendly reminder in two weeks. So ended up uh, for me, I ended up sending hundreds of emails and eventually I got response from two to three uh, physicians I did observerships with. And so another way is like I went to the community, like uh, I did an observership with my parents' family doctor. Like I just went there with my parents and I asked like, it's okay to do observerships with her. And she said, yes. And like, she, uh, and uh, she is like, she, she wrote me a really good letter and I gained a lot of knowledge from her. Uh, in your community, when you arrive, try to meet people, try to make friends, try to ask where you can see physicians and try to ask people uh where like if or physicians if you can do observerships with them try to send emails it's a long process but it's worth it it's work yeah i totally agree the dedication and the passion is the most important thing when you're applying to the match and people will recognize that it might not happen directly but at one point in your life people will recognize your passion and your dedication correct i agree so how how many letters did you get how where which specialty did you get them from and can you please tell us about that? Actually, for me, I applied to, um, I, I got, I think, around four, let, three letters for three or four. I really can't remember the numbers. Um, I got like uh, one from internal medicine, two from family doctor, and one from neurologist. And I applied to internal medicine. I applied to neurology and uh, family medicine as well because like at the end of the day they were all related to medicine and i really loved uh, neurology i really loved family medicine i really loved internal medicine each one of them had um, a different taste and uh, different um, interesting patient populations so uh, i got like uh, for internal medicine, I use like one internal, one neurology, one family, and same for neurology, and same for like family. Um, 
So here, uh, when you are asking your supervisor to write you a letter, ask your supervisor to write you a general letter and not um, specialty specific. So you can use it in different specialties. I know like a lot, there are a lot of people there who uh, ask me like many times that, well, like, is it okay if I submitted uh, like a internal medicine for family or vice versa? Yes, it's okay. And that's my experience because like, People here for like an IMG, they don't expect like you do three in one specialty because it's really hard. Like uh, I was only able to do one internal medicine rotation. That's very important because we all know that it's preferable to have all your letters from your special from the specialty of interest. But you're a good example that you match into inter internal medicine with one out of three, while the others were family medicine and neurology, which I'm sure they testified your passion and your your persistence on getting what you want yeah yeah correct I, I think that the content of the letter and how these people know you is more important than the specialty and the person it's you should focus really on people who really know you and worked with you and can justify testify to your who you are your personality and how hard working you are yes the most important thing is like uh, programs want hard working residents, people who they can work with for 12 hours or 24 hours and they don't complain. I agree. So when you applied, you applied to three specialties, if I understood correctly? Yeah, I applied to intermedicine, I applied to neurology and family medicine. How did the interview process work? How many interviews, well, not how many interviews, but how did the interview process work? Did you go to different places, French provinces? Can you please elaborate on that yeah so for me um uh, uh, starting like talking about french versus english provinces so i didn't apply to quebec side because like I, i'm not a permanent resident there and uh, also uh, i don't uh, like i don't speak french so i always applied like in ontario manitoba saskatchewan and bc uh, i'm not going to mention the number of the interviews i got because i don't want people to compare and themselves uh, like their number of interviews to my number of interview everyone is different everyone have different uh, uh, like experiences i know people who got one interview and they matched so i got number of interviews and um, the, the interview process is really interesting because at the end of the day even if you are an img it's really important to know it's not just a job. You just, it's not just, I just want to match. I just want to match. I just want to match. No, uh, in the interview, they are interviewing you and you are interviewing them. You want to see if you're a good fit in the program because at the end of the day, you are living in the hospital for three years. You are not working there. Uh, like literally you are living there. So you want to see if you really match into their program or know how you interact with the other residents. Uh, in the social day or the social nights. Yes, that's a very important idea. The fit of the program for both the applicant and the program is very important. Yeah. Many people don't think about and don't know, but it, it matters a lot because as you said, you're living together, you're residing in the hospital for three years in surgery, it's more. So both sides need to make sure that this is what they're looking for. Yes. So during, tell us about the interviews. What do programs ask about what do they care about as an applicant what should i be doing during the interview so the, the, during the interview the most important thing is just like be you be a friendly person uh like try to starting from when you arrive uh to the like the social the, the day before the interview when you arrived try to be nice to everyone don't go and uh bug the residents or like ask them a lot of questions like you can ask them like one or two or three or five some of them like they might tell you tons and tons of things about their program some of them they might answer your question but like try to be genuine try to ask like normal questions don't uh, uh, don't ask like uh, embarrassing questions don't try like just be you I, I feel like it's important try to talk to people uh, I know it's it might be hard for people out there who uh, they are not really talkative or like they tend to be more introverts. But like 
at the end of the day, people want to know you. And the interview, it's a process of selling yourself. If you don't go and you don't talk to residents, if you don't go, you don't talk to program director on the interview day, if you don't go and you don't talk to like other people there, they will not uh, like realize you were there in the first place. So just try to go and talk to them, um, introduce yourself. Uh, the interview questions um, are different. So like there are different categories I can talk about. Uh, uh, I, I can't mention the interview questions by themselves, but in general, they want to know you. They want to know if you know the program. They want to know um, what would you do in different situations. They want to know if you know the city. They want to know if you really want to go there because like if you have no one, let's say you are from like Ontario and like you have no one in Manitoba and you are interviewing there, uh, it, 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 it could be slightly hard like to so to uh, to understand like why you are coming here what's what keeps you here do you really know what is the program do you know uh, what is the program um, like what is the hospital like so know your program know yourself know what to do in different situations medical situations those are like the broad categories of the interview questions yes I definitely agree with that Programs need to know that you're actually interested in them. They're not one of 100 programs you're applying to and you just want to match anywhere. They want to know yeah. why you're specifically interested in that city, in that program, and you shouldn't lie. Lying is the last thing that you need to do, but just learn the city. You might you ha have something there that interests you or the program that you, know, you like. So just do research on the program, do research on the city that you're interviewing in, and tie that to your interests that you already have. I totally agree. I totally agree. And something people, I feel like for me, um, I didn't mention this, but like for both of us, I, I, I think like we did medical school in uh, like in really weird situations. We both like uh, were in Aleppo in Syria. And for people who don't know, like at that time, like there was a war from 2012, 2016. Although I survived th this experience, but still i find sometimes residency could be hard so when programs really ask you like do you know the program do you know the city they are really concerned about you because if you don't know how to have fun and how you enjoy your time outside the hospital like that's going to be a really tough experience for you and for them that's very helpful so you in, in the u.s i wanted to ask you this in the u.s they usually announce if you matched or no by Monday and on Friday they tell you where, which program did, did you match in. But did they have the same system in Canada or did they just tell you right away? No, they just tell you like no surprise, actually no surprises in Canada. They just tell you where you matched right away, which which I, fi I feel like it makes it much more easier. Like, Yes, I agree. That's, that's very stressful. But I think the rationale behind doing it Monday, Friday that they want to match the people who did not get enough spots with programs who did not fill their spots. So <laughs> yeah, it's way easier for applicants to know directly on Monday. So stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So you imagine the University of Ottawa? Yes. Tell us briefly about your experience so far. Uh, so for me, like I arrived to Ottawa uh, with my family uh, and uh, I applied. Uh, to internal medicine. Um, I love internal medicine. I love neurology. Um, so, but I ended up choosing internal medicine for some personal reasons. Um, and I really love internal medicine. So I'm doing right now internal medicine residency uh, at the Otto University. And I might be biased, but like we are the best program in the country, whether you agree or not, but that's my opinion. <laughs> you don't uh, agree with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, I, I'm so happy with the program. I'm so happy with the environment. I love the city. I chose Ottawa for like that uh, to reflect to to like I, I knew the city. I knew what I love here. I knew what to do on my spare time. I had friends. I had family, and uh, the program here is great. It's awesome. Had many things that I really loved. Uh, my experience so far has been great. Like right now I'm going to my second year into residency. The first year was like 
I learned tons and tons and tons of things. I, ter- I, I learned how to practice medicine which is different than learning medicine. You learn medicine in med school, but you don't learn how to practice until you are in residency. And so far the experience being great, uh, like we had uh, different, uh, like we have a really different and uh, variety of patients populations and uh, really interesting cases. And now I'm going to my second year where I'm going to be like uh, becoming a senior medical resident and I will be like a responsible of junior medical residents next year. So, so far the experience has been great, been awesome. And I feel that's in part because I chose Ottawa because my family is here. I knew the city. I had many connections and that helps a lot. That's, that's exciting. What are, before we wrap up, what are the most important things that you want to tell people applying to internal medicine or medicine, any residency in Canada that they need to know from your experience during residency? Hard work, the long hours, what do you want to tell them? So uh, regarding residency, residency, uh, it's not walk in the park. I said this in my interviews, but I really didn't realize uh, what that means. Uh, be prepared to work hard. Be prepared to learn a lot. And But the most important thing, before residency or even during residency, um, learn how to have fun, have a hobby, have something to do outside residency. Know how to de-stress. Uh, in residency, you have to please accept that you're going to spend many long hours in the hospital uh, you're gonna have like especially in your first year sleepless nights uh, you're gonna spend like tens of hours walking f- from different wards to the emergency and vice versa but you're gonna learn a lot uh, you're gonna make friends uh, also you have to know how, what to do outside of the hospital when you leave the hospital. Some people love to watch Netflix. I enjoy Netflix. Some people love to play games. Some people like to go for a walk. For me, like I love to exercise. I'm not an athlete, but like I just like lo- love to like do some exercise, whether it's like uh, running, doing some uh, bodyweight workout. So I feel it's important to do something outside of medicine, something to distress. Because if you are only doing work, home, home, work, at the end of the day, uh, you will like crash. And yeah. Coming from someone who spent like four years in a war situation. I never like, I, I, I know what is hard and I know like residency could be hard. So know how to de-stress. Yeah, I, this is a great way to finish our discussion that I believe passion and loving what you're doing is crucial for you to survive residency because if you're doing something that you don't like, you will not survive these long hours and how yeah, yeah, it won't work. It won't but believe me, it won't work. That you have to have this work life balance. And last week we were talking about this. We had a lecture about work life balance, and I asked one of my mentors, when is the right time to start, you know, balancing your life and work? He told me now. And I believe that you might have less time for for fun when you're in resident, but you should give some time, enjoy what you're doing, do sport, do whatever music you like, just do something to distress you, to prevent you from burning out. Yes, it's really important. Burning out is something real, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's I'll real. probably cover that in a specific episode about work-life balance, because I believe it's very important, not only during residency, but also during med school, during your research, and during your practice. Yes, I agree. Well, that brings us to the end of this three episode series. Thank you so much, Rupert. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. It was really great. I'm so happy uh, I'm able through your channel to share my experience for people out there. And hopefully uh, this will be helpful for people. And hopefully we'll do some more episodes about specific topics within the match. That would be really great. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, This brings us to the end of this three episode series. If you like this episode, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. 